We're joined on the talk back this evening by Claudia Toller, and she's brought her own wine with her today. Well, I'm just kidding. They're empty, but we are here because she has written this book, which is called Ohio's Lake Erie Wineries. I want to thank you for coming in, first of all. Uh, second of all, tell us what this book is about and why you decided to write it. Okay, this is a book by Arcadia Publishing, and um, if you're not familiar with them, they, pub they publish these um, Images of America series that okay. focus on a particular industry in an area. And Ohio was once the number one wine producing state in the country before California. Uh -huh. And a lot of people don't know that. I did so, not know that as well. So when I found that out, I thought, well, somebody has to write a book about this. And um, my husband and I had been going to New York State to the New York area wineries along the Finger Lakes for a number of years. We mm -hmm. love doing it. We yep. love talking to the winemakers, learning how they grow the grapes and make the wines. And when we discovered that there were wineries in Ohio, not that far from us, we decided, well, we have to start exploring those. Yeah. So um, I was on Arcadia's website, and I noticed that they had uh, Sonoma, Sonoma wineries and Napa and not wineries, us. And not us. Okay, so, so I you, thought I had to do it. So you dug into it. So what was surprising uh, when you started doing your research on this? You said the research goes back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. and it, what jumped out at you? Well, what jumped out at me was, was of course, that it was, the no, it was the number one wine producing state at one time. On Putin Bay Winery, at one, uh, on Putin Bay, South Bass Island alone, there were over 20 wineries at one time. Wow. And the wine industry started along the Ohio River, and dry rot, rot and mildew destroyed the industry, and they moved up to the lake shore because of the temperate climate. There's a 190-day growing season, mm -hmm. um, and there's um, also the moderating temperature of the lake, and the winds keep the mildew and dry right away. Okay, so that worked out well. So, so there's a lot of them you're talking about up by the islands. Here in just like the Toledo area off the lakeshore a little bit, do we have a lot, quite a few around there too as well? Well, if we go out towards the, there's not that many in this area actually. If you go out towards um, the state line in Bryan, Ohio, there's a winery called Stony Ridge Winery. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a nice spread there. Mostly local people go there um, and they grow their own grapes. And there's also a winery in Gilboa, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's called Hillside Winery, and they actually are carrying the books. Um, they can be bought there. Nice, nice. And, um, th and then there's um, nearby in um, Mommy, Mommy Bay area yep. in Oregon, there's a winery by the name of Jolin Century Winery, and that winery has been around for over 100 years. Wow. And um, the guy that the, there's two brothers running the winery out of the old family home. Nice. And um, they're making fruit wines and the old style native grape wines, the Labruscas, uh, which are like the Catavas and Concord wines. That's okay. what they're making there. Is there, is, there a certain, is there a certain way of doing wines that maybe we have here that other people don't do or do we, uh, are we kind of what everybody else does? Well, Ohio is known as having sweet wines, and I think that's because when um, the Europeans settled in this area and onto the islands, they were mostly German, and they found that there were native grapes already here. There were the Concord grapes. And um, Longfellow, Nicholas Longfellow, who grew grapes along the Ohio River, had perfected Catawba grapes, and those were transported up here as well. Okay. And so, um, so we do those, but not what's the other thing that's interesting that mo most people don't know is that's not the only kind, those aren't the only kinds of wines we have today. We also have, you know, people are, uh, some of the wineries are making Cabernets, Cabernet Sauvignons, mm -hmm. and Pinot Noirs, and wow. Pinot Grigio, and um, Rieslings have been around for a long time because they're one of the sweeter grapes. But those are European style wines, and we're starting to do more of those. Okay. And even Heinemann's Winery, which a lot of people are fami familiar with on um, Putin Bay, yeah. they've been around since 1888. They're experimenting with some of the more European style wines. So it's not just the sweet wines, you can get the drier Good. red or white Good. wines. Okay, so you can pick this up at Barnes & Noble or Amazon, all the big places you can get this at. Yes. Claudia, we thank you very much for your time. You're Best welcome. of luck in your research. That's your talk back.